Here we go. Amy Robbins. <laughs> What's up? This is going to be a fun one. <laughs> I, d I feel like I'm just coming to sit down with my brother and, right? and have a good chat about things that we love talking about. Oh, my gosh. Uh, outside of a show. Listen, I, and I also know they're going to say, hey, just keep the one camera angle. <laughs> I don't think so. Don't come I don't the, think so. Don't, don't come to the other <laughs> camera angles. Yes, for the audience, we'll get into what the cool stuff is she wears. We'll get into it in a minute. But let's just start at one point here. First, welcome to The Bottom Line. Thank you so much. Well, thank uh, you for having me. When I knew you were starting this show yeah. and I saw the guests that you were having, I was like, I would be so honored to come no, on honored. this show. So thank you. Yeah, I'm excited I'm, to be here. I'm so full up with this morning. My wife, I said, hey, she said, who's on today? I said, Amy. She said, really? I go, <laughs> I almost felt like, yeah. Come, of course. Amy would come to my show. Of course I would come to your show. No, that's good. That's amazing. Listen, I, I've known you pre-children and, and seen that transition and um, your mom. And, and man, I, I love it when, you know, we fight for women. I mean, we, yes, we fight do. trafficking and we fight, and, and men and boys too, but predominantly mm -hmm. women. It's raised by a single mom. I think women can walk on water. I think women are amazing. There's a couple of crazies out there at times, but I mean, that's so guys. But really, it just takes so much to be a mom and a woman. So I want to just journey with you a little sure. bit today in the world of being a woman today and this Ooh. mad world. I'll just jump straight in because it's bottom line. This notion that any guy can just become a woman. And it's not, I, and I said this the other day to someone, you don't hear us often, oh, it's easy to be a man. You hear it's easy to be a woman. It's like they're pushing that narrative, right? And I go, wait a minute. Number one, any guy that wants to be a woman, you, you truly by the definition, I don't ch go check again for a second, because <laughs> Genesis tells me you're gonna labor. Yep. You're gonna have pain yep. and labor. And yep. you, I mean, come on. I mean, it's not no, no. It's it's a preposterous notion. I think the the whole. I can't think of anything that's more anti-women's rights than a notion that you can just become a woman if you feel like you want to become oh, a yeah. woman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we have this conversation. My husband and I have this conversation all the time, and he jokes with me. He's like, I don't think any man that is really knows what they're signing up for if they want to sign up for this. He's like, I mean, I don't know how you do everything you do. You literally take care of 10 million things at one time. I don't know how you went through the the not just like the pregnancy, but the birthing, like how in the world? I don't know if guys know what they're signing up for when, yeah. when they do this. And so, you but know. But see, they don't. They're signing up for a partial, right? And it's to, to look like, but that's not what makes you a woman. I mean, I'm coming. Yeah. I just, I just, look, we talk straight here. I tell guys, okay, Go go on twelve menstrual cycles and then call me then. Yeah, call me twelve <laughs> months from now after you've had twelve menstrual cycles. Let, let's let's check a sanity check again. Not the woke culture of yeah. you know tampons for men nonsense. No, go on an actual you or know chest feeding or yeah. whatever this other crazy yeah. stuff yeah. is. Yeah. No, yeah. come let's go on just this. Deal with thyroid, deal with hormone, deal, just let's do that right mm -hmm. now. I mean, this is why I always said some of my friends' buddies go, man, it would be cool to have, you know, some of the guys say, well, in the old days, they had two or three wives. I'm like, praise <laughs> God, we don't. <laughs> Honestly, no. I don't know how Any guys, guy that how wants two or three, that. no. Yeah, oh, no. heck no. <laughs> no way. There is no, I'm telling, no, it's too much work for, as a guy. I'm like, yeah. no, look, there's times you girls aren't easy to deal with either. No, but it's, it's real. So, the woman for me is under attack. Yeah. The notion of being a woman, but there's physical dangers. I mean, we're fighting trafficking. 95% of the victims are trafficking, are, 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 are women. The trafficking victims are women. So in the world, ask you a question. Have you seen a change? Because you're in this world. You're, you're, very, you're very in tune with the Second Amendment. We'll get into that. You understand that. You got an incredible clothing line. You really cater to... You're one of those people Steve Jobs talked about saying, who, who are the problem solvers? Thank you. You solved the problem. Thank you. You took something called apparel mm -hmm. and you solved the problem. It wasn't just another. Yeah. No, it solves the problem. So, But have you seen a change in how women, agnostic of their faith or what their political beliefs are, just women, how they're talking about danger, Hmm. Uh, an awareness to be able to protect themselves. Are you seeing change in that? Oh, I mean, absolutely. So when I started this whole journey myself of getting into firearms, I'm, I've always 
grown up in a house with with guns, um, always a Second Amendment supporter, but didn't really make it a part of my own life. It was your dad. I, it was more dad right. that it introduced you. It was dad yeah. and, and, and husband who would have to remind me how to use firearms every time he left to go on work trips. Um, and I, I tell people that it until I had an encounter that I needed a firearm and wished I had one at that point, I wasn't actually making it a part of my everyday life. And that was a, a big shift and a big journey for me. And I can remember when I got into this. So I was training for a marathon and got followed by a van full of men. And at that point, it was just the harassing cat calls. On a run. On a run. And I was on these back roads in the country. And, you know, that was the first time in my head I was thinking, what am I going to do if yeah. this accelerates beyond cat calls and just the harassing comments? Am I going to run it, oh, jump the barbed wire fence? I mean, I'm not out running seven men. Mm -hmm. I'm not fighting off seven men. No. And even if I call the cops, they're not finding me in yeah. the middle of nowhere, <laughs> yeah. wherever I am, you know? And that was like my aha moment of saying, I need to be my first line of defense. I can't always rely on somebody else taking care of me. And then I have to be, I have to know that like, I've, I've got to be prepared for situations, not living my day every day saying I'm paranoid that something's going to happen, but being prepared if something happens. So no different than us keeping a spare tire in our car, right? Yeah. We don't leave our, our, our driveway every day fearful that we're going to get a flat tire because we're prepared. We have a spare in the back. If I know how happens. to change the tire. You know how to change it. That's mm -hmm. actually a really good analogy uh -huh. because so often women don't know how to, and then that spare tire. Does means no, nothing, right. does no good. Does right? no good. Yeah, yeah. So so I bring that up because I remember when I had that aha moment, I wanted to tell everybody um, about this newfound empowerment and confidence that I had because I went out, got my license to carry. I started getting serious training and taking it very serious. If I'm going to carry this tool on my body, I better know how to use it. And as I progressed in that journey, I could see my own confidence starting to grow in areas that I always looked at myself as a strong, independent, confident woman. But I didn't realize that when I could actually take care of myself without having to call the police or call my husband, that's like a next level of empowerment. The first I, 90 seconds, yeah. Yes. And I'm like, that is that is something that every strong, independent woman needs to be able to say is I can take care of myself. And 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 when I did that, I would go to dinner with with girls and I we'd be talking. Women don't usually just start talking about guns at dinner. No. Right? <laughs> so they would see me posting more on Instagram and they saw me going on this journey. And every woman that I would have coffee, breakfast, lunch, dinner with, they would sit at the table and they would go, they'd always look behind them first. As if it's like we're about to talk about something, you know, that's something taboo. secret. Something yeah. secret. They look behind them and they go, can you teach me about guns? And I was like, why are you whispering? <laughs> why Why are we not? Why Why can't we talk about this? So I saw like yeah. a twofold almost problem. like it's a taboo. Almost. Yes. So yeah. I started seeing like women are curious. They don't have resources, obviously, to go to unless they know of another woman. They might not be comfortable talking to a man about firearms. And then there's something that is starting culturally to drive these women to want to learn more about it. So whether they're turning on the news and they're hearing what's going on. I mean, you definitely saw the rise over 2020, 2021. The riots, the burning in buildings, all of us. And that's a heightened sense of yes. what I call situational awareness. Yes. So we started and you became situationally yep. aware on that run. Yes. Something. And I mm -hmm. would say probably God, yep. the Holy Spirit somewhere dropped in your spirit and say, what are you going to do? Yeah. In this kind of a situation, if it escalates, you became yep. situationally aware. Yep. Okay. Well, and I, I always tell people, I'm like, look, so the riots, right? They they drove a lot of people. We were 8 million first-time gun owners, 40% yes. females, right? I think that like the was, highest ever. Highest ever. Yeah, yeah. Highest ever. And, and I see that's very reactionary. That's like a reactive response sure. to what's going on. And my goal is to help women be, and I was reactive, right? My goal is to get more women to be proactive yeah. because I, because you can overcorrect when you react yes yes and emotion and all absolutely those things or you in. could find yourself in a situation like a lot of people found themselves in especially in, in states that have very restrictive um ability to get a firearm right so you have all these people in california and these democrat-run cities that 
We're like, oh, I see these riots. They're defunding my police. I got to go buy a gun. And then they find out they have a 10-day waiting period to even get their firearm. Yeah. So the whole time the riots are going on, you can't even yeah, be armed. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And they're like, yeah. wait, what? A minute? What? I thought it was so easy to buy a gun. It's like, no, you voted for these crazy policies that we keep telling you don't do anything to stop a bad guy from getting a gun, but it stops you as a law-abiding citizen when you want to exercise your Second Amendment right. You can't go get a firearm. And so- you know, that's Like countries, Canada, Mexico, South Africa. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I mean- Yep. And, yeah. and I think that was like very eye-opening for a lot of people that's like, oh, you see people that are very anti-gun or anti-firearm when it when their life hasn't been threatened or their safety hasn't been threatened. We're seeing it now with threatened. the Ukraine. The same people that's saying we shouldn't, you know, we fight on yep. the border. Mm -hmm. The stuff, Amy, the stuff we see on the border, it's insane. If people could just take a trip and Becca's here, she's been down there. Heck, she translated with some people snuck across the border. The same people that are mad at us for saying we need border security are the people saying, well, well, we need to secure the Ukraine border. And I go, that's what happens when you can't secure a border. Uh -huh. Someone else walks in the back door. Now, unfortunately, in, in, in the U.S., this happens every day and with children and for us trafficking, yeah. it's awful. But that, but it's too late then. Yeah. It's it's so you had the moment. Mm -hmm. Praise God they didn't jump out of the van that day. I yep. don't think. Yep, and that's, chase you. that's why I'm like, thankfully, my story ended there. But for so many women, it doesn't, it doesn't end there. Yeah. And so what even got me started wanting to make a Kinsel carry line was I I went and did a lot of research. So I myself had a need. I was like, gosh. I got my license to carry. I still want to train for my marathon. I don't want to be regulated to these certain hours of the day because when you're training long, long mileage, you've got several hours that you have to run. And it's usually early in the morning or late at yeah. night, right? You got to put miles in. You got to put your miles in. Yeah. And as a woman, I just didn't want to feel like I couldn't go do something. So I was like, okay, if I have my firearm, I feel a lot more comfortable that if a situation arises, I'm running able at to take 5 a.m. Exactly. And with and reflectors on your shoe because, you, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, it doesn't end at the firearm. It's no, like it's, being it's prepared all of it, right? is yeah. all of the above. It's having reflective clothing, it's yeah. having the right shoes, it's having the right. I mean, there were times I would run with snake shot because I was a little bit more terrified of the rattlesnakes I would run across than thinking I was going to come in, in contact with a human being that was going to do something to me, you know? And, and so when I started doing this research, I was like, all right, I, I got my gun, I, I got this stuff. Oh, wait a minute. Now, where am I going to put it? <laughs> right. Lulu was never going to put holsters in my pants. Nike, never going to put holsters in pants, right? And I'm like, well, okay. 40% of women choose walking and running as their form of exercising. Yes. Majority of those women have said that their safety has felt threatened on some level. And then we are seeing like this rise in women that not only are getting molested and harassed, but actually murdered like they're not coming back on their runs and i'm like this is one too many we've got to do something campus about rape, this although the chancellors and the deans will not report this nope. we know it yep through the roof yeah through the roof campus mm -hmm. rape through the roof yep and almost every single time it's a girl walking dorm to dorm at yep. night yep somewhere walking and what's their solution yep. Rape whistle or use the security, or, hope the security yeah, yeah, phone is yeah, working or on college campus. spray or yes. whatever. Come on. And you know, yeah. I've had so many girls when I talk about that at turning point events or I'm speaking, the, the girls come up to me and they're like, thank you for bringing this up because half the time those phones aren't even working. And what are you going to do? You're at first telling the woman that she has to outrun a man that's bigger than her, stronger than her, and faster than her. And then she gets to the call location and has absolutely no way of protecting herself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. So, you know, so we're seeing these, these women that are starting to carry self-defense tools. They want to keep them on their body, but they have no places to store it. And so I you was found like, this need, like a pers huge need. personal need. Like personal, I can't, I don't want to run yes. with a holster, mm -hmm. and uh, that would be awful. Yeah, like, number one, to go belt. on a, a fifteen mile run, <laughs> yeah, with a belt and a clonking holster. Yep, I can't even stand running with my phone. I, I, I'm like, or a fanny pack. Like, then you want it no, bouncing no. up and down. And I'm, I know they're. I'm just by the way, I'm I'm the no fanny pack guy. No, okay? no. I mean, I'm I like a good fanny pack. I'm an '80s baby. For a girl, but, but you know, <laughs> the mani pack. You, you're not going to sport the mani pack. No, no. no. <laughs> not no. for you. No, no, no. <laughs> you no, know, no, you're losing me there. Yeah. So don't no, worry. No. I won't be making no any mani, mani pack. packs Please for no you. Mani pack no, me. no. So I said I I need man something. The man, the merce. The merce. The merce. Yes. <laughs> never had one, won't have one. <laughs> won't ever do it. Uh -uh. Uh, but I, I'm like, I wanted, I wore athletic clothes 80% of my day, even if I wasn't working out, just like Especially every as a mom. American is it's doing. Throw yes. it on and throw it on and go. Hair in a bun and go. Yes. Yeah. And get out the door, you know? Yeah. And so I'm like, we got to make this more conducive. And I want 
my my heart is to see every woman carry some form of self-defense tool in their body. Would I love for it to be a firearm? Yes, if they feel comfortable and they're trained but and something. they want to do it, but something. And it's got to be easy, convenient, and it's got to look good, feel good, and you know, it's got to not replace or make it difficult for what you're already wearing. Yeah. And that was really the whole idea of why um, I decided I need to do something about this. And, and you decided, we're going to get after the break, we're going to get into this. You, you decided to literally, you decided, no big deal. <laughs> It's going to launch a clothing line. No challenges here. And I and look, I'm an entrepreneur. You are. We've got multiple things. I mean, and I love that spirit. I'll, we'll get back into that real quick. Real quick, guys, go to Patriot Mobile, 972-PATRIOT. When you dial 972-PATRIOT and you mention the bottom line, you're going to get free activation. Why? Because they have your values, conservative Christian values. They're the only conservative Christian cell phone carrier in the U.S. They use all the major towers. You're going to get great service. But more importantly, you know that your dollar is going to a company that puts their dollar into the community. Hey, they went to the border with us. They helped us feed servicemen and women, ranchers, rescue children. They really put their money where their mouth is. Please check them out. Patriot Mobile Dial 972-PATRIOT and mention the bottom line because you'll get free activation. Amy, just an aha moment. I can't buy Nike, Lulu, whatever. I can't put my, you know, it's clunky. Where am I going to put this firearm, yeah. right? And so take me through that moment. Okay. Particularly with your husband. Because <laughs> because here's what I also want to do here. I want to encourage women to start small business. Absolutely. And, and I want women to hear. I'm, I'm married to a a writer that writes full time yep. all the time. She's always producing films, right? Three kids, homeschooling at the moment. Yep. Okay. Women can. They you're, can. You're married to Superwoman. Uh, so. <laughs> but 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 you you moms. But you, you moms yeah. who run business. So talk me. And I think it's important that they hear from you. Just that sure. moment when you heard the little still voice. For me, it's when God speaks to you. Whatever. Just the process. To, Absolutely. To them. Well, and and I love talking about this part because this is really a part I don't get to share a I whole know. lot. I think people. This think, is why you're oh, here on this she show. Just, you know, she showed <laughs> up. She had an idea, and she made it happen. And uh -uh. people don't understand. So first and foremost, I wasn't in the manufacturing industry at all. I'm not a designer. I don't have a background in that. And so I love sharing the story of how I got to where we are now because I want people to know that you can do it too. Just because you might not have the experience, you might not have the education, if you want it bad enough, yeah. you know that you can make it happen. So I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. When I was five years old, I asked my dad, what do I have to do to be the boss of everybody? And my dad and was I like, oh, and I've met you, And I've met your sister. <laughs> I've met your sister. You are the boss of everybody. But but no, but honestly, I always ask people, what was your first job? When you were in, in true entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. will tell you, oh, they were in their teens. Oh yeah, like oh. a lemonade, like legitimately something. I was running. I was running. I would go around to the children at five years old in our cul-de-sac and ask them if they had toys I could sell in a garage sale, and I would give them a percentage of their sales, <laughs> their toys. My parents were, did not were, like that very much. Yeah, I, no, but it's little toys well, are us for the community. Yeah, but they were like, Amy, you can't sell their new kids on the block watch and only give them like 50 cents. Like you need to be fair. So it was a great learning. I mean, it was a great okay. business learning. Uh, even as a, as a small kid, I mean, I was always looking for ways. My We didn't have a lot of money growing up. My dad was in the ministry. And so we everything that I had, I always had to work for. And I, and I was okay with that. Yeah. I, I loved it. So I was always looking for, I loved running businesses. I had candy businesses and popcorn stands and you know anything as a kid because how are kids gonna make money you know really and and that spirit really carried I think through my entire life and it's it's looked different my whole life I've had I've I've had a talent management agency that I've started I've, I was always starting something but I always knew that whatever it was I was doing the real business that I wanted it I wanted it to help people yeah. so everything even Solve with the, problems even with the talent management company I loved helping people I loved guiding I loved helping so this just so happened to be it was solving a problem that I had and then as I did the research I was like oh there are millions of women that need this and that want this and even within the gun industry there was nothing at this point that looked good i so mean there so was you started you started diving in yes well not just not look good but the functionality you needed as a runner right or a mom on the move yeah 
I'm well, sh- I wasn't a mom at that you point. You weren't. So I, I but wasn't four even, moms yes. at that time. You were not yes. even a mom. I you wasn't were, you even, were married. Yes, I was married. Young. We had been married, oh gosh, 10, 11 years. So you at go that to your point. husband mm-hmm. and you say, hey, I got this. So idea. I knew this was going to be a little tricky. And I, this is a little secret, ladies. If you, if you. Please do share. You know, not, and not every woman who starts a business runs a business with their husband. I mean, they they sometimes can keep it completely separate, but I knew to really make this work. He had a set of skills that I just was, I, I am visionary. I am the idea person. He is the operations and the detail. And I'm like, yeah. if I'm going to get this done, I really need his help. So I got to get him on board. So I didn't just shoot the idea to him. I did all my research first. I had a business plan put together and I was like, look, I really think that I really think that this is going to work. And here's the numbers. Here is... Um, here's where I think this can go. Here's where we can grow this. The only problem is like, I mean, I don't have a manufacturer. Oh yeah. yeah and I'm not a designer. I have no idea. Like yeah. the first who's gonna, idea. Who's going to design this? But I, yeah. But, but, you, but, but you've I have seen the, the end. Yes. You've seen the end. And, yeah. and I'm like, I, I see where this can go. I see women living these safe, empowered, confident lives. And, and I see us changing an industry, not only mm. the firearm industry, but the activewear space yeah. industry. And that's ultimately what I wanted to do. And he took one look at it. it was like, I think you're onto something here. And he was like, let's pray about this and prayed about it. And then from there, it was one thing after another that God would drop people in my lap that I needed to make this happen. I mean, I remember the first manufacturers I talked to was out in California because all my contacts are in LA. Try to tell people in the fashion industry that you're going to start a line of clothing that's going to hold With guns. Gun <laughs> okay. You, you want to think that my idea, you know, as Great of an idea as my husband thought it was, and I thought they it was. were shooting it down. Yeah. Oh yes, like I got laughed at left and right. Every door closed but in I my love that. face. I love that. Friday, uh, I think Friday, a guy sat in that chair. Yeah, Friday, a guy sat in that chair. Doctor Pete Sue, like who I want you to meet, and he said, "Yaku, I left chiropractic school. I had nothing, and I knocked that on eleven thousand <laughs> doors." Wow. And I go, "Yeah, I don't know a single story." Not one in my life, right? I was raised without a father. I don't know yeah. a single story where they really made it and own it, where it was not, I mean, mm-hmm. rejection. There was re- yeah. major rejection. Well, but that that is going to show you if you're cut out for this yeah. or not. The uh, entrepreneurs that want to make it happen, I think when your vision is big enough and you be- you ha- you have to believe in it because chances are one, nobody else is going to believe right. in it. <laughs> so right. you better believe in it. Yeah. And I'm that kind of personality, though. The more I hear no, the harder it makes Same. me work. I'm like, it actually fuels me. It, fu- it does. It fuels me. So I'm yeah. like, oh no, I believe this. I know this, and I know this is gonna this is gonna work. And so I'm just gonna keep on keep on trying and knocking yeah. on doors. And yeah. um, and so you know, we 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 talked to many manufacturers. I talked. I found I found someone that knew how to do designs, and he's actually one of the top designers in LA. And this is a funny story. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna out him by saying his name, but I I will say that he he came up to me and was like, he called me. He was like, okay, I know everyone's laughing at you, and mind you, top designer in in LA. If I told you the the lines he's designed for, you would know all of them. He goes, I have a lot of guns. And I love this idea. I am so he goes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this for you. I wanna do your sketches, I'm gonna do your tech packs, I wanna do your your sizing, wow. your he's like, I think this is such a cool idea. And I I, I can't tell anybody. And it's you know, a massive of hole this. in the market. Massive. There there wasn't anything. This there is what really I love nothing. when God look, if it's a God idea, you said you and your husband prayed about it. For me, I I really have a relationship with God. You know, I hear when I know when I hear from mm-hmm. Him, and it doesn't always mean you like what you hear. Yeah, <laughs> very okay? true. Yeah, but I hear from Him. And then we pray and we go, and but then that's all I need. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I can anybody on planet Earth can reject what yep. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. My idea did not come from a man, and it did not come from me. So Amen. I can run one with. Yes. Mm-hmm. Every time I do that, and we stick with it. He brings mm-hmm. the men or the women skill to the task. They just show up. Absolutely, and I will tell you in this the middle too. of rejection. Yep, they'll just show up. They'll the show up, people. and and I'll tell you this too. So because people think in order to to start your dream, you have to have all this funding and all this millions financing of dollars, and millions yeah. of dollars, and you know you or, or you they go wait find until they until they do and they never get there. Yeah. And 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 we didn't. So we wanted to own the company outright. Plus, we had to test this market. I was like, yeah. no one's going to just hand over money to us in the apparel industry, which is there extremely was no risky. For this, yeah. There was no blueprint. You know, we we were going to have to put our own money into this. We had our our risk tolerance of how much we could. We ended up selling our house um, to put 
some money into the company and take a big risk on our very first amount of inventory. And then we're like, all right, well, we, we got to sell this. <laughs> we we got to get this sold. Uh, this is, you know, coming down right? the pipeline. Yeah. We, we, we took our own risk on this. And it would just so happen that the month that we launched, and again, I could spend a whole show talking about the, the insurmountable mountains that we had to climb to get it to launch day. And you just can't quit. You just can't give yeah. up. It, again, it goes back. So to many you quit. Believe, so many quit so many at the one yard early. line. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And they're so close. They're so close. And there's so many that want them to fail, mm -hmm. and that's envy and jealousy and all the other things in competition. And then they encourage them to to quit. But you just said something. I I live by this rule. If it's worth if it's worth something, it's gonna cost it's something. It's gonna cost something. Mm -hmm. You sold your house. Yep. For a woman. <laughs> Giving up security <laughs> is very difficult. Uh -huh. Hence the reason you even want to conceal carry. But giving up security of future and where we're going to live and financial security. I want women who are listening to the show to hear. You hear it from me as a guy. Hear it from Amy. At some point, you're going to have to step into the unknown. So true. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to take a massive ball. Yep. It's going to look so risky. You, you went and mitigated the risk as much as you could. Yep. Smart women got your husband's buy-in because yep. together you're stronger. But then still, it was a huge risk. Mm -hmm. It was huge risk. And 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 we didn't burn the ship, so to speak, until a couple of years into the business. So we were bootstrapping this thing. We both um I was I was all in on it. And then I mean, but I had other things coming. So I'm still doing stuff in the entertainment industry. I was yeah. hosting TV shows. So I, I did have, I don't want people to think like I didn't have other sources of income either. We we had other sources of income that were coming in, but that was our main focus in in growing this because the the marketing that you have to put into it, the we were doing a grassroots. Thing. We were starting an entirely new niche in a huge oversaturated market. I mean, it it just could not have been very competitive. Very very competitive, and we yeah. had no money for marketing. We and, had spent and, all of and, our money on inventory. And even <laughs> if you're a small player in that market, mm -hmm. the big ones just gobble it up. So you you yes. you're working against behemoths. Yes. And we sell in retail a lot. You sell how retail works is it, it's it's shelf space and it's space, yep. and they just take it up. They take well, it. Well, that's up. why we decided to go direct to consumer. I so know. that was our first I love like that. we the model that we put together initially was to be direct to consumer. We knew retailers were not going to buy our products right off the bat. We had to prove to them that yep. consumers wanted this. Show me your sales. Yes, yep. show them the sales. Right. And so you know we're we're getting through all of this. We we have October was going to be our launch date. This is this is where we're going. We think it's, you know, it's there. We're manufacturing. We manufa ended up manufacturing overseas. And that's a whole other story because our U.S. manufacturer actually stole our money and our product and nearly put us out of business. <laughs> so we barely had any more money to then put on another round of inventory because we hadn't even made sales yet at this point. So we, we were like, all right, we're going to launch this in October, October of 2017. Just so happened that month. I don't know if you remember this or not. The Me Too movement yep. started. Exploded. Right then yep. it, it, in that month. And it, and I'm not going to say it just so happened. This is God's providence of yeah. all of this timing. We just couldn't have planned it any better because at this point, like I said, we had no money for marketing. We were able to get a lot of earned media as the company that's you know putting, allowing one to put guns in their pants. And we're kind of the antithesis to the Me Too movement, or we're the we're the solution to the Me Too movement. Yeah. And that's really how. Yeah. So so okay, we hear you. What are we going to do about it? Yes. And just by by providence and in in the timing, you know. It just lined up. It just I mean, it lined up. Yeah. And and so we're like, look, this is and it was so revolutionary at that time. We were getting hate from a lot of feminist sure. movements oh, yeah. and a lot of, of a lot of feminist of groups, which is really funny to me because I'm like, you guys yeah. are the ones that started the Me Too movement and yeah. you don't want a woman owned business to come in and give you a solution so that a woman never has to say Me Too again. Or if it something has happened to him, we're giving them an option so they can say never again. You don't want that? So they they want I don't know if well, it, they the, want the victim mentality. No, 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 can't no, no. The it weird, no. Well, uh, here's my take on that, and and this is we number one. We've never rescued a sex traffic victim that self-identified as a victim. They don't know, and most of the victims, most of the trafficking survivors, die after rescue. And people go, well, why is that? Mm. They literally don't know. Now what do I do? Now where's my identity? It was super dysfunctional. So in that Me Too movement, why that movement got hijacked within a month yep. and went off the rails is people latched onto it that wanted an identity that had no real 
at times even a conviction about it. Same thing happened through the BLM movement yeah. and burning cities down. People are looking for identity. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, if you then come and say, you know, okay, we have a solution. Well, what am I going to do if I can't just pick it and, and, and rally me to me too? No, well, mm. we need to be a proactive society that brings solutions so right. that we don't say me too. Right. But we say never again. Never again. Right? <laughs> or but not you, me. Or yeah. not me, but you'd find some people that don't want, that truly don't want don't that. Want that mm -hmm. right? Well, and I think a lot of it too comes from once you take that step of saying, I'm going to carry some form of personal protection. A lot of people I've found they don't like that idea because that means they have to face the reality that there's evil in this world. Mm. A lot of people don't, they want to, no. It's I had one evil, I, had, no I evil. did. I had one lady tell me one time, no, I, I, I like to live my life with a bubble. And I believe truly in her heart, she believed that that bubble, her imaginary Protect bubble her. was protecting her. And I was like, I just, I don't get it. I mean, dear God, I hope nothing ever happens to you that you then have to look back and say, man, I really wish I didn't think about that protective bubble. But so I, I see that. And then also it it means that you are taking personal responsibility. And I think we have a serious lack of personal responsibility uh -huh. in this country. And accountability. And accountability. And, you know, 100%. and so that's like a lot of we the We want to blame everybody else. It's yes. always someone else. And, yes. and, and actually, you know, we... We say it stops with me. You know, it's it's here. And even trafficking, I ask people, are you contributing to the problem? You know, and so even apathy is contributing to the problem. Sure. You, you know, even not standing up for someone else. This yeah. is why I can't stand it when I see a guy filming someone else being pummeled. Put your phone down. I know. I just, I can't. I mean, my I sons my it, and my daughters, they know. I don't want to see your video. Mm -hmm. I want to learn. I want to hear from people who I witnessed you stepping right. in on behalf of somebody yep. else. Mm -hmm. You stepping in the gap, you know, you- Defending you Defending the defenseless. Yep. So before, being a voice for the voices, mm -hmm. before we get into the apparel line here, because I really want to go through, I want the audience to be thoroughly introduced to Amy Robbins. And they say, well, yeah, what's the name? Alexo Athletica. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tongue twister. We're going to get into yeah. the name, Alexo <laughs> Athletica. We're going to get into the name because names have meaning. Mm -hmm. Before we do that though, Tell me what happened to you psychologically or what you hear testimonies from women, mm. what happens to them psychologically when they start getting empowered, but not just knowing I've got a gun on my hip yep. because something else happens mm -hmm. to you yeah. as a human being. You, you really start walking differently and taller, not just because of the gun. It has, a, yep. it has an emotional effect. Yeah. On, on, so talk me through that. Well, well, it does because, you know, I, I would always tell people, like I said, I was like, I always felt like I was confident. And I do believe that there is a, a level of confidence that you can project and portray to the world that will lessen your chance of being a victim. Yeah. And when that doesn't work, having a tool to back up. So this is kind of the way that I was thinking about it through the Me Too movement. I was like, a lot of women find themselves in situations, and I heard this time and time again, where they said, I just didn't feel like I could say no, because in resisting or fighting might make my perpetrator do something a stronger worse. aggressor. Stronger aggressor, it's, right. We hear it every day. Yeah. So to me, what a tool like a firearm does, it gives me the confidence and the power to say no and to mean it. Because I now have a way, if you advance beyond the point when I said no, I can do something about it. Yeah. That's a whole different level of confidence <laughs> when mentally you know that you can back up what you say. It's, it's, it's even going to change your initial no. Yes. The, the, the confidence and yes. the force. Mm -hmm. Because you can which, do something about you know, it. Because you know you can back you it up. You know that yeah, you, can, yeah. you can back it up. And you probably say no more often. Absolutely, you will. Right. And yeah. I will go a step further that says, and it's not just about carrying the firearm. It's knowing how to use that firearm, knowing how to get to it, knowing so how pivotal. it operates. I so mean, pivotal. It, well, it's so dangerous. If you don't know, if you're not trained, don't don't have it. Right. If Absolutely. you're not going to take the work and, and put in the effort and yes. really be, become proficient yes. and efficient and res and responsible. Please don't, please mm -hmm. don't do it because it can be used against yeah, you. Yeah, then I don't mean, have it. Oh, so yeah. often it does. That ends up the mm -hmm. case, right? It's not just good enough to have it. Right. You have to yeah. know how to use it, know how it operates. Be uh, When I leave my house, I, I, I know the condition of my gun. 
I know if I've got one in the chamber. I know if my safety is on or off. I know I've I've practiced a few times dry firing and, and getting to it. Because look, ladies, we wear layers. We yeah. wear clothes. We try to make that with Alexo as conducive as possible to get easily to your firearm. But you still have to practice. And you still have to work on getting it's to muscle it. Memory, so I know 100%. when I leave what outfit I'm wearing and how quickly I can get to something if someone comes from behind, from the side, and from the front. And people may say, well... You that you live that paranoid, and I'm like, no. And no, it's actually, not by knowing that, actually. I am so not paranoid. It yeah. is so yeah. a second nature to me at this yeah. point that I don't fear getting out of my no, car it's, by myself. It's 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 preparedness, and it's it's ready, mm-hmm. able, and willing. And willing. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Ready, a- so we do it with everything else in life. Yep. We have a preseason in football. Why? I want the receiver and the quarterback to have timing to be ready, able, and willing to execute any play. Yep. Which play? I don't know. Uh-huh. We may never run those plays. There's plays we drilled thousands of repetitions that we never ran in a whole season. Yeah. Well, coach, why did I do that? Because if we needed it, I needed to call you got on it. it. Uh huh. And, and you needed to not hesitate. Yep. Because hesitation is death in those ninety seconds. Yep. And it I'm- is. Uh, it is. Even police that don't fire enough practice rounds because they're yep. defunded and they don't have, right? Yep. They, when you hesitate, you're going to make mistakes. You are. And the confidence, like, I know yep. what I'm doing. So my first my first no, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trained my daughters. I mean, their first no, it is so forceful. Yeah. It's so forceful. It's their body language. It's their hand. Yep. Of course, my kids don't carry firearms. <laughs> But when they say no yep. to somebody in their private space and knowing private space, it's forceful. I'm so glad. It yes. has to be confident. Mm-hmm. When they're old enough, right? And I took them out recently. I bought them a I bought them a shocking, striking pink BB gun. They <laughs> yes. picked it. I mean, it's it is shocking pink. Love right? it. We sat in my car. We had targets. Yeah. And they kept wanting to say, "Well, put the bullets." And I said, "Nope, we're not shooting today." They cried. They were so mad at me, right? And I said, "We're going to talk gun safety." Gun safety. Right? Yep. And I and I and I taught them terms. Yep. The gun is hot. The barrel is clear. Safe. You know, hot range, cold range, yep. everything. Know your target. <laughs> know your target. Don't want you know. Yep. Clear. Whole deal. Awesome. They got that, and then it became a game. And then and I put a little coke can down. Yep. I realized I was too small for them, so I gave them a little big big. <laughs> Hey, aim small, miss small, you know? Right? I said, okay, I'll get him a bigger target. And the first time they shot. Now, now my oldest daughter said, Dad, on her own, she said, Dad, I never, ever want to shoot anything or anybody. I said, I don't want you to ever, right. ever. But I want you to be able to be confident enough to use this. And she said, okay, I'll mm-hmm. learn. Right. And so. Okay, that is so important that you seven. said that. Because she's seven. People think, they have this misconception about people that carry firearms, right? They think we're out looking for the no. fight or that we're out there and we want to shoot people. The best fight is the people. fight you walk away from and you never engage I in. I hope I never have to use my firearm. And I'm going to go back to what you were saying because it's the foundation. It's the ethos of our company. With it, We're more than an apparel brand. The whole entire idea and the foundation of Alexo is about building people that have strong minds, strong bodies, and strong set of skills. So we... We provide the apparel, but we push and encourage people to improve all of these because we know when you have a strong body, a strong mind, and a strong set of skills, you are able to live a prepared lifestyle. You're confident. You're more confident. You're yes, more prepared. You're more deal. prepared. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's really where we want people to go is, yeah. is about being just prepared in really everyday situations in all of your life because when you are, you are more confident in that lifestyle. And so the... We're, we're just a brand that that pushes that. And there aren't any other, there's brands that will push the body side. There's brands that will push the mind. But there is no other company, a special apparel, apparel company that is pushing all three and incorporating the ability to know firearms and have be safe, are, are you proficient seeing, firearms. Are you seeing women, uh, just talk to me what you see. And I don't really care about the numbers and we can dive into numbers and different things. But are you seeing an uptick in the demand for this? Are you, st- you know... Tell oh. me some of the testimonies, the women. Yes. So <laughs> Because normally when someone solves a problem with apparel, normally it's ugly and it's not comfortable. Right. And I'm excited in about a minute to throw it on screen and for the audience to see that 
This stuff is, I mean. It's good looking. It is really it's cute. Good <laughs> it's great. Look at the jacket you I have on. Like we'll I talk about this I can't even say cute jacket. anymore because we've now launched the men's line. And my husband is trying to tell me not to call the men's stuff cute. And uh, yeah, I'm like, my, okay, my, we'll so, work on so, yes. when my, so my daughter's, at one point, so our son's two, right? And my kids are big. They're really big kids. I mean, Arwen, she's probably going to be six foot. So our son's big baby. Yeah. Big kid. And. One of the days, a girl says he's so cute, and he replies, "I'm handsome, right?" And he says, "I'm so handsome." I'm so handsome. I'm so handsome, and I go, "He's handsome. He's oh, not cute." Oh, I love that. So you can have a yes. cute line for the girls, <laughs> and a not and a cute then, line for the men. And then you have a not cute, yes, very masculine, mm-hmm. but handsome. But line it's, for it's the guys. a comfortable. We're going to focus on the simplicity yeah, and the right. comfort, but for, good looking. for the men. Yes. So, so like talk me. So, so Becca, if you don't mind, can you? Pull up Alexo Athletica, the actual website. And uh, when, when it's up, we'll have Amy drive us through this website. Sure. Well, because we started, so when we first started, like I told you, we were, had very limited funds. We were going to do kind of a capsule collection, your key pieces that you needed as a runner. We were really focused on the running community. Leggings tights, yes, right? Yes, because Predom- at first, predominantly, because that's where you would hold the exactly. whole Exactly. Yeah. So it was capris and full length leggings, um, a few jackets to complementary uh, to complement the pieces um, and really kind of round out this lifestyle because that's ultimately what we wanted. We wanted this to be an entire lifestyle brand, not just make a couple of products here and there that were conducive to can still carry, but truly encourage the whole lifestyle. Okay. And so, so we started with um, a signature pant and uh, capris, and we're actually on our 3.0 version. So we have now done this reiteration of the really? signature pant. We're on the 3.0. We're about to do the 4.0 version because people love this pant so much. It's so great for running. The compression on it is so fantastic. The fit, we perfected the fit. It took us years to perfect the fit. And um, then the functionality and the compression within the waist, that's that's the true um, like special qualities of Alexa. You, you cannot just go and hook a, a fabric clip holster with your gun and your Old Navy leggings because yeah. it doesn't have the reinforced uh, strength to hold that up. If you're running to the grocery that's store, the fa- maybe you'd be fine. That's in the fabric, right? Right. So we actually built in, um, we have a patent pending construction of our waistband and it's shockingly compressive the first time really? someone puts it on. They actually are like, I think I got way too small of a size. I'm like, no, give them a good stretch jump into them. I call it the Alexa dance. You got to like wiggle and jump into them. And once you do, then get your tool, your firearm, your maze, pepper blast or whatever, and then see how it, how you okay. like that compression because you don't want to size up too much. And then you don't have the, re- the retention actually comes from the waistband itself. So you have a passive retention coming from the front and the back of the firearm that keeps it close to your body without the need of a big bulky holster. And then we also have a special compartment. We make these custom TPE, which is kind of a, a flexible rubber okay. that fits in a separate compartment in front of the firearm. And that gives you trigger protection. So if you're not utilizing oh, okay. a pocket with a firearm, you don't have something hard and rigid sewn mm. into there. This is removable. And you also have the option to carry appendix or kidney right and left-handed okay. and, and move that TPE trigger guard from pocket to pocket. Amazing. So, and, and yes, you can and, run and when you're not And when you're wearing it and you're not carrying anything, it just... You get so used to the like compression, you can eat a big meal and it sucks you in and you don't have anything rolling over <laughs> or <laughs> it's great. I call them the turkey pants. People around Thanksgiving are these are great turkey pants because they'll just suck everything in. And it's it's super comfortable. As I know yeah. ultra compression may sound kind of scary at first, but you really grow to love it. And you'll like, I don't even, most of the time, I don't have to carry my purse when I'm going to the park or I'm going to, you know, out with the kids. I just pack out all the pockets. You've got eight pocket places to store things in the waistband. Credit cards, whatever it's going to go in. Lip gloss. It's again, it's living your best prepared life. Whatever you, you can even put a flashlight in there if you needed one. If you want, if you like carrying a blade, you've got places to put that. You can put a, ba- I've ran with baby bottles in the side pockets of my legs before. What? Yes. Because when I was, I was like, okay, I should stick that in there. It's so convenient. It's right there. You know, phone, it's everything. I mean, they're, they're mom pants, they're purse pants, they're everything. And so we started, we started with that. And then we have just, the demand 
grew so quickly that we were able to expand beyond just leggings and a couple of jackets. We expanded to running shorts, to skirts, to joggers. Uh, still, we've we've got the most amazing fabrics. Talk to me about what you have on here. Yes, and then we're so, gonna we're gonna throw the website on the sure. screen. We're gonna throw a website on the screen for people, and we'll go through certain things and so, some brands, but uh, sorry, uh, some lines that you have. But this. This, so I'm actually you walk in this morning with this jacket. You're previewing this yes. camo. This camo. So this is our breezy moto jacket that's going to be coming out in March. So this was one exciting thing um, as we worked really hard over the last five years to truly carve out a new place in the gun industry. Uh, because we wanted to change a lot of the, lo the look and the feel of things that we were seeing in the gun industry as well. Uh, Springfield Armory came to us and wanted to do a collab. And we wow. were like, absolutely. Uh, they were really starting to push their subcompact uh, pistols. And they really focused on people being active with their firearms. So it was a perfect partnership. And they said, we want to do an entire collection, men's and women's doing a collab. So we designed and created all the clothes and it's co-branded with Springfield Armory. So this is one of our jackets that is coming out um, super comfortable. There's You've so many different fabrics, right? And inside mm -hmm. of that jacket, I mean, yeah. you've got like a, like a mesh. mesh. It's a stretch mesh. Stretch uh -huh. And Power mesh. camo on the outside. Yep. And it's real lightweight too. So it is going to be released in March. So it starts to warm up, but you've got the breeze and the like areas here that actually can, it's very Super breathable. Cool print though. Yeah, thank you. And I very mean, our, cool. look, camo is not going anywhere anytime no, soon. No. And that's probably the most requested print that we get out of everything. We've tried other prints and they've done well, but camo is by far the number one requested. So we're constantly coming up with new designs on what can we do differently with, we did metallic camo over, uh, Thanksgiving and really? it, yeah, it just like flew off the shelf. It was awesome. Uh, but yeah, so, so we've so got- So for, for men, okay, so for women, I understand tights. Yes, so and men again, have again, as we joggers. talk, we'll, we'll, the joggers, we'll throw it up. So it's a, m a little bit more of a relaxed fit, right? Totally relaxed, super comfortable. So with the men's, we did a soft launch over Black Friday. We did active shorts, because we knew that guys, you know, that want to work out or want to go on a jog, want shorts and jogger options. Yeah, yeah. And so we came up with the shorts, the joggers, and then this performance top that the way that we do our cuts and our fits and the fabrics that we use are complementary to reduce printing to help you know we lengthen some of the shirts if you raise your arm you're not going to brandish your weapon or anything like that and so we take all that into consideration with and it's all with an active lifestyle yeah. in mind so super comfortable super simple uh you've got the places built into the leggings and it's only our bottoms that have built-in holsters at this point yeah we have not moved to jackets in the yet. jacket or, or in it like a chest carry or in, something in the like future that, yeah. we may move in that direction but right now it's all in the bottoms and the jackets and tops just complement the lifestyle pieces alexo athletica the name talk to me about the name how so did, how did this thing come i about? love i love this part because like you said there's so much meaning in yeah. names and and we knew that from a branding standpoint that was something extremely important so my husband and i were on a road trip and we were talking through this this is right when we wanted to start this company and i'm like all right we need a name that is is both masculine and feminine, something that appeals to both. Uh, you know, I'm throwing out words like war, fighter, warrior, you know, and I'm like, wait, I love the Greek language. I've always loved the Greek language um, in the Bible because you, the way that the Greeks break down words means yeah, something yeah, usually so yeah. different it's, than and the translation old, into English. It's such an older language, right? Right. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm like searching, I'm like, okay, what, what means like war or warrior in Greek? And they pulled up, you know, Alexandra in Greek mythology was the Greek goddess of war. And I'm like, Alexandra, nah, it doesn't really work. But which part of that means defense? And, and it said Alexo. So Alexo was the part that means to defend and help. Come on. And I was like, that's it. I didn't know that. That's it. So, and then Alexo Athletica, because we're an athletic company, but it actually AA, 2A. So we have like the 2A mm -hmm. meaning going on there. We have mm -hmm. the the deeper meaning of defense and and help. And that's exactly what All we wanted time, to do. All this time, I've never I've never actually asked you. Really? No, I've never asked you what the name was. And I'm so into names. Mm -hmm. right? So that, that makes all the sense yeah, yeah. in the world. It means to oh. defend and help. And I loved that because I'm like, we're giving you the, we are helping you have the ability to defend yourself, but we're also giving you the option to help throughout the rest of your life. You carry all the essentials and tools that you need. So because of a personal need, this is so amazing, because of a personal need on a run, that morning when you went, was it a morning run? Uh-huh. That morning when you put your, you know, 
your running shoes on and you went for a run. No way you're thinking, hey, I'm going to start a clothing line. No. To, you know, you're on a run. There's a real imminent situation. Mm-hmm. And you turn that into something that's now blessing a lot of women and a lot of, and really empowers. It's an empowering tool. Yeah. And, and, and I think, so let's talk about, okay, the clothing line is one thing, but it's also surely opened up opportunity for you now to talk to women. Yes. And just, and not even just about carrying a gun, but just broaching the subject of take power back. Right. And, and to a degree. empowerment. And yeah. because empowerment true, is a true, true empowerment. empowerment. It's not, a word I mean, that not we're virtuous. Hearing. Oh, my God. Yes. It's so virtue signal. It's it, been it, hijacked yeah. by yeah. so many different groups. And I'm like, I really yeah. want to steer the conversation of, of empowerment back to this notion and this idea of self reliance and preparation and, and confidence that really stems from something that. I, I needed and I experienced. And so, yeah, this has opened up a ton of opportunities as a two-way advocate, but then also to speak to women entrepreneurs, to speak to women about uh, their situational awareness and empowerment. And, and that's what I love because yeah. you asked earlier, what were the things that really kept me going in this? And so when I had all the naysayers and I had the negative comments that you get on you know, social media when we first launch and all the trolls that are coming after you, you're going to take all the hits when you were the first one over the hill. No, and question. I, no, no question. No question about it. And yeah. I, I welcome that. I am fine. If I can carve out this in the market, because obviously we're starting to see a lot more people like enter into this space. Like, oh, great. We're really glad that she took all those hits <laughs> for us. But that's fine. I'm glad there's more people getting into this active concealed carry space because that means more people will carry. Mm. And that means more people will be able to be prepared and take care of themselves. But I would get, when we started, I don't know how many brands get handwritten letters from their customers telling them how much they love their product. Maybe they do. But when I get letters from FBI agents and college age girls, I don't even know how they found our home address, but they would send me letters and they would say, thank you so much. I now feel so confident walking across campus wearing your Alexos uh, or wearing my Alexos uh, that I, I, I'm just so thankful that your product exists. FBI agents are wow. like, thank you. Because when I would go on my runs, they carry off duty as well. And they just didn't have products that they liked that sure. they would want to, sure. you know, be able to carry their P- particularly their... active wear. Yes. It it's was one, so hard. it's one, th- mm-hmm. yeah, it's one thing if you know, but I mean, truly, I mean, and I think what, what nails it for me so much so is I, to tie this all together, I firmly believe I'll, I'll give you an example. We fight porn like crazy. Okay. Now this is a weird, mm-hmm. I'm going to tie this all the Yaku. What does porn <laughs> have to do with? Okay. I'll, I know where I'll, you're going. I'll, okay. <laughs> we fight porn. So I'm telling people, look, Become more active. Mm-hmm. Get off the couch. Get off your phone. Burn an enormous amount of energy during the day so that you're not up at 10 o'clock at night. Yep. Because 10 to 2, those are the porn hours, okay? Get something to stimulate you. So women, yep. my wife included, will go run or go walk. Mm-hmm. Yes, some women do go to the gym, but predominantly they'll go run and yep. walk. 50% of women choose okay. those two. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... 50% of women run and walk, yep. but now we're in a culture where we got all kinds of crap happening yeah. in 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 middle, rural, high-class America in yep. every neighborhood. So by default, it almost makes it, well, I should stay indoors more. Yep. And that's not what we want. Mm-hmm. The lockdown was atrocious. It yep. was terrible f- for our culture, right? And, and just, just hormonally and yep. chemically. Yeah. You girls need to get out. Guys need to go to the golf yeah. course. Go hit go hit golf balls. Go do something, mm-hmm. right? So so this is a huge solution to a problem. And I'd say even for the women that goes, I, I've never wanted guns. Just to be current with the times, we're seeing women in Ukraine picking up arms at the moment. <laughs> we're seeing yeah. citizens picking up with no training yeah. ever. Mm-hmm. Right? I saw a comment from a, from a celebrity, and I, I'll, I'll leave the name out. It's a British celebrity, well-known. Uh, soccer player and he made a comment two days ago and he said what's happening in the ukraine will never happen in america because the citizens are armed you're not looking at a citizen class that has to get trained Mm -hmm. last minute a five minute tutorial how not to shoot their neighbor yep right or themselves Mm -hmm. in the foot or worse right you're looking at a citizen class that if for some reason the worst case scenario happens which is happening in the ukraine where your military is just not strong enough, you don't have enough arms, mm-hmm. that the citizens could hold the fort. 
you know, AKA the Civil War in yep. the US. You go to Franklin, Tennessee, and it's a battle of Franklin and it's civilians. Yep. South Africa, how we won the blood, you know, the, the War of Blood River against the Brits, how we fended them off. It was civilians. It wasn't mm -hmm. the military class, it was women mm -hmm. and children at times helping, right? So it's just about proficiency and being efficient. Yep. Well, and to that point too, I mean, I'm, I am all about the Ukrainians having the right and the ability to do it. And I, a lot of the posts that I would see, I would see people saying, oh, you know, I, I never, never thought it was always, I never thought I would have to learn how to use this, but here I am. And I'm glad I I'm learning now. And I'm like, I'm glad you're learning now too, but also, Hey, we live in a country right now where don't wait. Again, don't, wait. don't be Why reactive yeah. to what's going on. Be proactive. And, and I in your say training. this, and I say the same, just to not to be hypocritical, about mm -hmm. your health. Yes. Work on your health today. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until you've got to go to the hospital or the ER. I mean, that, come on. To, let's to become point, more proactive yes. in, in 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 preventative. Well, and measures. that's that's what I was saying. Like when we focus on mind, mind, body, and armor, it's I want people to know as an activewear company. Go and work on your strength. Why? Because I would love for you to be able that to run away from a situation yeah. versus have to use your firearm. I would love for you to be strong. I would love for you to be capable to take care of yourself prior to having to use your firearm. But if you do, you have a place for that too. Yes. And then also work on your mind. Calming your mind in stressful situations opening your eyes to be more situationally reaction. aware. Yeah, yeah. Those are things that when you are living this prepared lifestyle, it, people don't think about that necessarily, but it's no different about calming your mind. I think about now as, as a mom, I'm like, if my kid has an emergency situation, they got to go to the ER, they're choking on something. The more calm you can be in that situation, 100%. the better you're going to be able to handle it. So really this mind body idea is really filters into being prepared in all areas of your life. So it's really, a, and not that I'm trying to rebrand you, but it's really a healthy lifestyle it brand. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it, it promotes yes. all of that. It okay. does promote fitness. Obviously, it's a fitness mm -hmm. brand. This is not just about, you know, guns, guns, guns. It's right. not. Right. It's just saying, look, hey, there's a real need. Mm -hmm. I want women to be active and men. And when you're out there, it's harder mm -hmm. to carry something yep. that you can defend yourself with. Mm -hmm. And so for that same reason, I, I, I look at the MMA. I was going to bring up some MMA fighters. You know, I look at the MMA, for instance. I don't particularly, right? I love MMA. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly like women punching each other in the <laughs> face, okay? But that being said, I'm training my girls how to punch. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not a hypocrite. I don't want them to go become MMA fighters. <laughs> but I want them to have confidence uh -huh that if someone comes close enough to mm -hmm. them, that they believe in themselves to throw the punch yes. if yes. they need mm -hmm. to, right? It's just and having more tools about. in your toolbox. 100%. That's skills. It, that's the armor part of a hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. We, we push and we promote multiple forms of self-defense preparation skills because we know the gun is not the end all be all in every single situation. Sometimes you just, you need your strength. Sometimes absolute you need- Absolute last resort. Absolute last resort. Absolute. Yes. Self-defense only. Yes. Last resort resort your yeah. imminent threat on your life yeah. last resort yes. i mean there's situations where you again going back to your mindset have to be able to read the situation and know where this can where this is going and and what force to use but you need to have a multitude of tools in that Absolutely. toolbox and then the more you do the the more confident that you're going to feel yeah because you can take care of yourself yeah in and, any and, at time, and at times even just displaying the ability to do that is enough of a deterrent. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I took a self-defense class in college and the this was so funny. This is probably where my, my journey started. I, you know, I had to get my uh, credits for sure. the- And you're like, oh, let's take a self-defense class. I'll take a self-defense class. class. All right, fine. Let's go gotta, get the credits. <laughs> let's do this. And their suggestion was always obviously walk with your shoulders high, walk a straight tall. back, walk tall make eye contact with everybody that you see in a parking lot. And they would even go so far as saying, be loud. Yes. Even if you're obnoxious, say hi to the person that's across the street in the parking lot. Because you know why? 
that person's probably not going to mess with the one confident person. No, that because is a bully wants a soft target. Of course, we say this all. Yeah, and so you know that I was this weird person on college campus. I'd be like, hey, like yelling at people from across. But I was like, oh, so I am not going to be a target. Oh, so the oh, so the word spread, crazy Amy. Oh, don't yeah, get, crazy Amy. Don't yeah, get don't mess close with to crazy Amy. <laughs> probably looking back, probably I didn't date a whole lot in college. You know, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. Not okay. a bad thing. I look back at my eyes. Like, hey, to all the dads thing. out yeah. there, how do you get your daughter not to get a lot of bad? dates just make her crazy amy yes just yelling, make her yell at you across the parking yell at, lot yeah yeah yes. like don't mess with that girl mm -hmm. she probably knows something but those are first easy steps that mm -hmm. every woman can start practicing i see far too many women walking with their head down in their self put your cell phone away Take your earbuds out of your ears when you're walking across yeah. campus or Be you're going alert. on a run. Use all your senses. Just, this is not the time. Yes. No. Like you have yeah. to Listen be... to the birds for a minute and take in some oxygen. Yes. You don't need to, mm -hmm. you, know, you don't need, you don't need to be jamming on something. Those yet. are easy, yeah. simple, situational awareness we, we steps that we you can say take. That, Amy, we say that, but it's not being, I, it blows my mind. If I tell you, we go into schools and campuses and things we train, it's not there. But they, because they're not, not thinking it's going to happen to them. It's what it is. They're not facing reality well, that... Well, look, you, I can't stand mainstream media. You know that. If anything, mainstream media should be teaching them is that crap is happening. Oh, okay? you know and what I've should, always I mean, said? I've always said at the end of every dateline, they should have a segment called what they should have done. <laughs> Right? What you yeah. should do, you know, at the yeah. end, I yeah. listen to Crime Junkie podcast. I'm a true crime, major true crime junkie. And, but I'm like, they never offer solutions. They always are doing this story because somebody died. Most of the time it's a woman. And I'm like, they never offer what you to a do solution. In a situation. Yeah. They, they're, they're telling me a story about a girl that died from the crazy Uber driver, but they not once gave me any tips or information about how to not let this happen to you in the future. And I'm like, we need to add that on to the end. Like, give a give a quick disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Girl should a not have been doing this. A solution. Yeah. We need to be mm -hmm. a solution-driven society. I think we're way too reactionary. Yeah. We have to become way more proactive. And so this is a discussion 100% about really preparedness, mm -hmm. a healthy lifestyle. But then there needs to be some sort of a mechanism, right? This water is in a bottle. They couldn't just hand me water in my hand. So they had a vehicle. And the vehicle here is an amazing apparel line for men and women, Thank Alexo you. Athletica. It's on the screen for the audience to see now. I want to encourage people to go to the website, learn, drive through that website. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I want to ask you, I asked you this before. You, actually, you asked me. Talk to me about the Alexo Fit. <gasps> Please. Okay. So okay. it's the fit was something that we spent a lot of time on because you can tell when you're buying a premium activewear brand, it has to fit. It has to have amazing, luscious fabrics, but that fit has to be there. It can't gape at the knees. It can't sag at the ankles. And it's got to lift you up, suck you in, and smooth you out. Can I get an amen from all the women? Like, you're wearing yeah, spandex. You do not want yeah, to. Yeah, I wouldn't know as a guy. So it's got to yes. do, it's got to do what? It's got to lift you up. Suck you in and smooth you out. See, those yep. sound like fighting words to me. <laughs> you telling me something's gonna lift me up, <laughs> suck me in, and smooth me. Out. And it's like every woman's dream. If I'm gonna be I'm wearing like, spandex listen, pants hey, here, you walk you know? up to me and say, "Hey, we gotta lift you up, suck you, and smooth you." I'm like, "I'm gonna smooth you, out. <laughs> <laughs> smooth you out." No, this. Is, so the, the fit does that, but then also just take into account if this is your first time to to buy these. Take the time to look at the size chart. Do not just go based off of, hey, I wear a small and Athleta or Lulu. We There is no universal size grading when it comes to athletic oh. wear. And I think a lot yeah. of people, unfortunately, are maybe not honest with, like, actually take your measurements. And I say that because of the they way that buy, the waist... Don't buy the waistline <laughs> yes, you the, want to be. Yes, the okay. waistband... Hey, I fall guilty of it too. I just had two babies and I'm like, I'm pretty sure I can still fit into my old size. And then I put them, I'm like, no, I cannot fit into my old size of yeah. these Alexos yet, you know? So be honest, take the measurements because you will have a much better experience. So there's a chart. Uh, and again, there's a get, size chart, and, yes. And then guide. And then, okay, so someone orders something, it shows up and the size doesn't, it's just not right. We can absolutely exchange that yeah. and or return it for you. But yeah. I do tell people the, the compression and the waistband is shocking. So you got to give them a good stretch because 
because we use those special reinforced elastic. Or just wear them that, for like a, a Wear them. Just get move, into them. 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 They get real tight on your thighs, but you got to get past that point, get them on, and then you're going to love the compression and you're going to love the way that they make you feel. You forget that you have something that tight on and it's comfortable tight. So it's not so restrictive that it's uncomfortable, but it's just shocking at first because people are like, oh, well, I wear, I've worn Spanx or I've worn Lulu and it's even more Yeah, but your so. Spanx is not going to hold up a- Yes, you know, it's not going to hold up your Glock 43 or yeah, your exactly. P365. You know, yeah. th these are designed to hold up underneath the weight of a 23 ounce loaded pistol. In fact, I've tested out with four pistols in all four carry pockets and I've done burpees we and a, they we need don't a, We move. need a picture of that. I, I have, one time I went on- We uh, need a burpee picture. I went on Alley Best Stucky's show pulling out all my, I had like- 12 things on my body, I think, down to like- Ali Beth is so, Ali Beth, and I've been, <laughs> I love Ali Beth, I've been on her show. She's so, she's almost like porcelain, right? She's, 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 she's yep. a little bubble wrap. She loved these In a pants. great way, yeah. right? <laughs> but then I heard her talk, I think I heard her talk about having you on, and I was like, wait a minute, there's a lot of feist in there. Oh yeah, no, she, yeah, yeah. she was like, I gotta, I gotta see how many like, weapons or self-defense tools that you have on your body. I was like, well, I got about 11. And I just started pulling them all out and the pants did not sag. They didn't fall down. Your gun does and not This is for a test forward. case, of course. You're yeah, not saying people course. go run with 11 weapons. I mean, if, if you want to, more power to you, but I I don't yeah, yeah. I don't run with that many, you know. Um, but, but the gun doesn't flop forward. It stays put. You know, they are built and designed for runners. So yes, yeah, you can train good. for your marathons. Um, you know, there's, there's moisture wicking properties. There's extreme compression to help uh you know runners need extreme compression yeah. and so there's there's things that are built and designed for specifically for runners and then like i said we have expanded beyond that to more lifestyle pieces as well so realtors that need skirts we uh, have a proprietary design called the tuck and carry capability where realtors need to tuck their shirts in how do women tuck your shirt in when you're carrying so um well if you go to the site you'll see the you'll see a a description it's called tuck and carry anything with tuck and carry it's two it's like a faux waistband basically in front of the belly band and you can actually carry and then tuck your shirt in over it and that's revolutionary because men and women have not been yeah. essentially able to tuck in I mean, that, you, and under those conditions where do you put right, it right where, yeah. do, where do you put it and so the the tuck and carry skirt was a huge hit we sold out of that I, I mean within hours uh, lots of professionals love that we probably need to bring that design back we haven't had that in, in over a year but uh, we've got running shorts we've got joggers now that the weather is going to be warming up here yeah. soon the shorts are just an amazing option if you don't want to go running in 90 degree heat and full length leggings away from apparel away from everything else um you're now a mom of two yeah right? that all happened in the last two years pretty quick <laughs> that's quick yes yeah, like i said I, i've known you before the yeah. first i mean it's quick and and it but it changes everything for me it changes it changed everything everything I mean, mm -hmm. and you know your life your priorities that, that those little lives i mean it's so precious it's so incredible well it and i will say this because i think there's a lot of women that are probably watching your show that think well are my dreams over when I have children? And I love to tell women that children do not end your dreams, they enhance them. Absolutely. And don't let that be a deterrent. Is it another challenge? Is it another obstacle to, to getting some things off the ground? Maybe you'll have to go a little bit slower and that's okay. Yeah. But my children have enhanced everything that I'm doing. I've always believed in our mission statement. I have always had this strong purpose in what we're doing, but it's even more so now. Now that I have a little girl and I have a little boy and I want both of them to grow up and be confident and be strong and be empowered and no firearm proficiency in training, it, it just enhances everything that we've been doing. Yeah, and there's no, the whole, there's such a, it could be a whole show. There's such a a, a misrepresentation of what it is truly to be empowered as a woman, this mm -hmm. whole glass ceiling nonsense. I tell girls and women, there's no ceiling. Yeah. Don't it even, anybody even convince you that there's some ceiling mm -hmm. to break. I mean, God God speaks to you, ordains it. I mean, you can do all things. Yep. And so just, just go for it. And mm -hmm. Encourage young girls to dream. I think one of the greatest things from this episode is just hearing the story of saying, look, you can literally go tackle an industry that honestly... It's like the soft drink industry. People who tell you, do not get in it. Okay. It's, it's too competitive. Yep. It's too saturated, mm -hmm. right? Are we going to get into fitness apparel? I mean, it's, you know, 
just even Tom Brady with TB12, it's a mission to yep. launch a clothing brand. Mm -hmm. It's no joke, man. No, I mean, it's, it's the challenges, the manufacturing challenges alone. Oh, we should have been shut fulfillment, down. Fulfillment, so, the whole fulfill, deal. Yeah, it's, it's everything. Insane. Yeah. It, it, it really is. I mean, literally every piece of this type of industry would tell you don't do it yeah. and to get out of it. But once I had that that vision I and I saw it, women, yeah. I was like, "There, I can't not do and this. And for the husbands out there, your wife can. Don't think just, I mean, because I think so many women, they do think my dreams are over, even just when they get married. I, I just believe this. A very confident guy wants a very confident woman. Amen. Encourage mm -hmm. her, empower her. Yep. I, honestly, support with everything you've mm -hmm. got. It makes you a better and a stronger guy, not a weaker guy. Yep. Definitely don't just want some subservient trophy wife. You want a fighter and a warrior, particularly yep. today. And that's who you want as a mom to raise your children. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. no, no doubt. I salute you. And it's amazing. I'm super... I'm, I can't be jealous. I'm not allowed to, but I really love that <laughs> Thank print. Thank you. Thank you. So that we have lots print. of cool things for the guys the coming guys out with our spring camo. build. We do much different camo print for the guys, but they've got some really cool yeah. stuff. So the spring nothing build cute, line, though. nothing cute. Just, just comfortable, yeah. simple, amazing yeah. active wear for the guys. And that'll be out March 31st yeah, on our website. And handsome. Yeah. You'll That's, look very this handsome. This is a, guys and girls, Amy Robbins, Alexo Athletica. Yes, it was a huge endorsement for the brand because it's a lifestyle brand it's a fitness brand it's a it's a health and wellness brand to empower women and we are all about empowering women on this yes, show we're all about empowering women and, and setting letting women go 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 be warriors for us in the marketplace yep. too so i pray blessings over the brand Thank the you. kiddos um and, and now i'm gonna have to get some <laughs> Yes, you do. I know. Especially we, for my Now wife, we yeah. just have to get the, yes, we'll get you when we get our pants back in stock in your size. You're tall. You got yeah. long legs. So I do we... have long legs. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Yako. I really appreciate it. You're a champ. Thanks, Amy.